Welcome to Crypto Tutors. We are humanizing cryptocurrency and blockchain and are bringing the best trailblazers and success stories like Isaiah Jackson, Tanya Evans, Ian Bellina, Cleve Mesador, and Tinashe Nitaganga on the crypto couch. Click subscribe and the bell to be the first to watch the latest interviews every single week. Mm. You know, you raised a very interesting point, which I think, you know, sometimes we forget with the pandemic that one, there is a pandemic, uh, which mm -hmm. continues to persist. Yes. But two, you know, you mentioned supply chain and logistics. And I think that's really important in relation to the blockchain, because, you know, one of the, the uh, hindrances with the pandemic, especially early on, was getting, you know, goods um, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to folks and you know, the blockchain could have potentially um, remedied some of those those constraints that we saw. Tell us a little bit of tell us a little bit more about that. You use the, the toilet paper example, but it, in healthcare, for instance, you know, mm -hmm. what was an example based on what happened in the pandemic that blockchain was you know, solving for or could have been so, could have been used to solve. Yeah, there's there's uh, so many, but like I said, I think that the basic is credentialing. We had a large amount of healthcare professionals literally being flown across the country. But what most people don't understand is that you're able to practice in one place but not another. Uh, but you put them on a plane, they hit the ground running, but now they have to be credentialed in that state. So a large amount of those people had to wait instead of doing their jobs when they got off that flight, they had to wait to be credentialed, to be allowed to work. So that could have been done immediately in the air <laughs> and then they could have happened. That, those are those kind of things. Also the information, there were a, a strong pockets of information of people doing the research that was already being done in 2019 and early 2020 before this had you know, kind of ramped itself up. They couldn't get that information out again that's where blockchain could have easily solve that problem. What are you working on? How are you doing this? All of the clinical trials that were being utilized that were again siloed and unable to be, you know, basically leveraged across the teams that were working on it simultaneously. Mm. And again, making sure those results were given in that timely fashion. You know, all of the the you know the equipment that again is a logistical issue. We had a surplus in certain areas and a deficit in another that could have been easily charted. And this is where IoT and AI, all of these emerging technologies could have worked simultaneously together to give us better inputs and better outputs. Mm. And so let's be honest, you know, the healthcare industry, for example, is um, in many respects quite antiquated with like how, um, you know, how the systems are, are governed. And so for you, what are some examples of, you know, healthcare uh, providers, institutions, that are adopting these emerging technologies, adopting blockchain, um, and sort of serve as a, uh, a, a example of, of, not to say the gold standard, maybe I'll say the Bitcoin standard. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. I mean, I think there's organizations that are doing amazing jobs. Consensus Health is one of them. Um, I participated in their hackathon for COVID in, in 2020. And again, bringing across all over the world, people who are trying to solve these problems. And again, that was a great, utilization of not only the technology, but also of just, you know, again, the, the shared camaraderie where we have a, a common problem that we all have to solve. Um, I think one of the interesting parts, and this is where being in the space is really important. While there were many individuals who came up with wonderful solutions, I kind of had to be that person to pump the brakes and be like, that's a great, great solution, but and this is where we as black individuals need to be at the table when these things are being built is because some of the times people aren't aware of what happens after the fact or during. So I was that person who was like, that's a great idea, but it can be weaponized very quickly against my community. And it's in those moments when it's being created and being crafted that we have to have that dialogue and whatever it becomes a group think or everybody's like, oh, this is great because it solves the problem. We forget that there's other tangential problems that come along. We're not solving just one. And I always tell code lives forever. It never goes away. Mm -hmm. So that's one, something that we really need to be careful of specifically with blockchain because it is the immutability aspect of it. It's going to live in perpetuity. It's going to outlive all of us, 
even if I write it today, it's going to be here. And that's where our participation is really required to make it a robust, as well as servicing everybody, not just a select few. That's such an important point around how uh, instrumental it is for, you know, people of color, women, um, marginalized communities, let's be honest, to, to have a seat at the table in terms of the development of these technologies, because you're absolutely right. Um, you know, implicit bias can be baked into the, the, the system. So tell us an example, if you can, of how, you know, of what um, you felt, you know, exclude, you know, was exclusionary or, um, you know, would have put us at a disadvantage or, you know, what are some examples of, of how, you know, you had to just shut people down basically? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it just thoughtfulness. I always say thoughtfulness in the code needs to be there where the tracking, we, that was a very big part of it. Everybody wanted to track the individuals, track where everybody was. And I'm like, that's great. But the minute that you say track, we have a problem. There right. is in inherently an issue with that because again it's not just for a time frame this is not revocable kind of permission it is always on 24 7 and that's where we had that problem with a lot of the you know the wonderful <laughs> the wonderful remedies were definitely all had that component that was definitely caused a little like maybe we should think about that a little bit is there a way to opt in and opt out is there a way for me to give you permission only for a certain time period or only when I enter these arenas? Those are those kind of things. So there was a little more, I would say, finesse needed at that point. And that caused a little slowdown. And they were like, she's going to say it. Because I was like, great job. I felt like the teacher that was like, yes, you did. But, but, and it was just kind of that issue all the time. But I didn't want it to make it like, this is the conversations that we have to have. These are the these are the purposes of having different voices in the room. It makes your product better. A hundred percent. And you know the irony is that to this day, especially given all of the um, statistics that substantiate, you know how much more uh, profitable organizations are that are diverse. The fact that we still have, you know, issues of representation is mind boggling. And I just love the fact that you rocked that shirt today and kind of let them know. Yeah. What was what, you know, like two black women on a crypto couch talking about technology, talking about emerging technologies at that and just representing, you know, showcasing that like we are here. We do have a voice that deserves to be heard. And I think you gave a number of great examples of how uh, significant, you know, our, our voices are, how needed our voices are. We're going to make sure that people know why Talisha continues to shine. I can't wait to release this episode. I just want you to know on behalf of women, on behalf of the Black community, on behalf of really everyone, thank you for what you've done and continue to do. When I, you know, talk about juggernauts in the crypto and blockchain world, it's people like you that not only epitomize that that title but are literally helping to change the world for the better and you get all the flowers i give you all the props and i'm just so excited to be on this journey with you and have the privilege to share you with the crypto tutors uh yeah. crypto couch audience that is a wrap so make sure that you subscribe and click that bell so you know uh every episode that's released Make sure that we hear from you. Comment below. Let us know what you think. If you have some interesting use cases that you're toying with uh, leveraging blockchain for, drop it in the comments. We want to hear. We want to build community and facilitate and empower you however we can. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again. Peace. Bye, y'all. <laughs> want to learn more? Visit CryptoTutors.com.